week. And uh, now they all have sinus infections, and some of you are going, oh, we're not scared. Allergy. I think there's a microphone I need. Might talk loud today. I want you to turn with me in your Bibles real quick to uh, put your finger on 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11. Turn to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 10. And then turn and put your finger on Hebrews 12, verse uh, uh, 25. 1225. I have to talk real loud. This week we talked about foundations. Jesus is our strong foundation. And uh, most of you know, uh, we looked this morning at the cornerstone that sits right out here. Uh, most of you know that the foundation is the most important part of any building. And uh, it tells us that we are the building of God or the temple of God. So I want you to know that you need to have a strong foundation. Now, Ray can tell us a lot about it. We got in a conversation about concrete last week and uh, about the bridge and the detour. But really, probably the most important part of any building is the foundation. Why? Because everything's built off that, right? So, when we think about having a strong foundation as Christians, we need to ask ourselves, are we standing on a firm foundation when we're going to be shaken, stirred, and all those other things? Paul wanted to make sure that Timothy was aware of that, so he told him how to fight perilous times. How many of you know that in the last days, perilous times will come for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers with no self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power. That's a lot of stuff, isn't it? See any of those things manifest themselves today in today's world? Absolutely. But he tells him how to fight against that or to stand against evil. And it says in verse 10 of uh, 2 uh, Timothy chapter 3, it says, But you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me at Antioch, at uh, Iconian, and Lystra. What persecution I endured, and out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution, but evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from the childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. And all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your goodness and your grace and your mercy. Lord, may you grant us your uh, Holy Spirit to empower what we do and say today. Thank you for these children. We pray for all those, Lord, who are uh, not here today and ask, Lord, that you would uh, bless them with uh, good health. Protect us, Father, from the things of this world. Cause us, Father, to live in victory. May you be our chief cornerstone and the firm foundation on which we stand. Cause us, Father, to rejoice in your goodness. We give praise for who you are and all that you've blessed us with. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. When you think about that firm foundation and 
I told you many times the church we got saved in, Gil and I, or I did, in a little country church called Peerless Baptist Church. It was uh, in Texas they built uh, churches on blocks because they don't have to worry about freezing that much, so they put them on blocks. Well, somebody had apparently kicked the blocks out of the front of the church on this one because it had a sloped uh, uh, aisle way. Not intentionally, but because the front of the church had fallen and settled down and the back was up higher. So if you ever started to repent, you had a quick runway. It'd go, woo woo. <laughs> Get you rolling, you're going. So uh, I, I think about the firm foundation, and all of us are going to need it. Somebody asked me the other day, are we in the last days? And yes, some of you are in your last days. We don't know when Jesus is coming back, amen? But we know he's coming back, right? Yes. Amen? Yes. So all of us have to be ready. And uh, this week when we were talking about Vacation Bible School, that was our uh, uh, theme was construction, cranes and construction. And it was about building a foundation of God's love and calling God's forgiveness and, and accepting God's promises and having a firm foundation for life. And that's something that all of you want for your kids, right? And you can look at, uh, usually you can look at parents and tell whether their children will be successful because it's the foundation by which they build it. What about, and let me ask you something, this is really important in today's world, marriage. Marriage is a cornerstone of an orderly society. I say this about every uh, uh, wedding that I perform, that God's uh, first covenant with, with mankind was uh, the marriage, a wedding. He said a man and a woman ought to be together. That should be the foundation on which families are brought up and grow up. So when we think about this foundation, we need to know that everything that goes into it Everything that comes out of your life is going to be standing upon the foundation that is laid, and that is Jesus Christ. It says that in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. What did he tell you? Uh, 1 Corinthians, yeah. I got it here somewhere. He says, chapter 3 of uh, 1 Corinthians says in verse 11, For no foundation can anyone lay other than that which is laid, which is Christ Jesus. Now, if anyone builds on that foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become clear for the day, will declare it, because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test each one's work and what sort it is. And we want to say, how long will our families last? Well, as long as you built a firm foundation, your family will continue long after you're gone. So the foundation that is laid is important, and it's got to be Christ Jesus. How many of you can say without a shadow of a doubt that you are saved? You've accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. You don't seem too excited about it. He paid the price for you. Amen? Amen. 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 If you're saved, you ought to be shouting about it. You ought to be telling people that ought to be the foundation on which everything else is laid. I've been saved, born again, not by what I've done, but by but because of the grace of God, none of us deserve it. It's not by works, lest any man should boast. It is Christ Jesus and Him alone. Yes. Amen. Amen. That's it. Grace of the Lord is the foundation on which we're built. And we think about this foundation. What else do we know about it? We know that God gives us all these things. And Paul lists ten of them in 1 Timothy chapter 3. He said, you follow my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, of uh, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecution, afflictions, all those things you've watched me go through. These are things that have been built into the foundation of your life through the Lord Jesus Christ. You've seen the Lord deliver me through all these things. And yes, you'll go through the same things, my son. He says, for all... Uh, who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. All of it. You guys think we live in a world that's uh, kind of... How many of you would say that our world is uh, probably scarier than 
just about any time in history. I don't know. I can't speak to you know World War Two and uh, World War One, but. How many of you would think this is a pretty scary time for people? I mean, really, for most people, it is pretty scary. I mean, you got this invisible enemy, the pandemic thing that people are saying could, you know, kill you. <coughs> By the way, it has less than 1% uh, death rate to it, doesn't it? I, I mean, I, if you meet me, I could call it be that much of a death rate, to you? <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't want to joke too much about it, but I want to tell you, it's not, it hasn't been any more harmful than some of the other things we've faced, but we've faced it so differently because our, our world is filled with fear. They have no foundation. They have no uh, anchor to cling to. They don't have something that holds them firm in times of trial, they need a firm foundation on which to stand. And the only way that can happen is if, as Paul said, even though you're going through these things, you must be following the example of, uh, of those faithful ones that went before you and standing on the doctrine, which is the Holy Scripture, that makes you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus, because all Scripture is given is uh, is inspired of God and profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction. That foundation Amen. that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. You need a firm foundation. I've told you about my mom, how she never gets shaken. And the scripture says in uh, Hebrews chapter 12, tells us that. It says, what does he say to us? He says, everything, uh, let me see, in verse 25, see that you do not refuse him who speaks, for if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth, but now he is promised, saying, yes, one, yet once more I shake not only the earth, but all of heaven. Now this, yet once more indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken as of things that are being made, that things which cannot be shaken, which cannot be shaken, may remain. Therefore, since we receive a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we, we may observe and serve God accepted, acceptably in reverence and godly fear, for our God is our consuming fire. You cannot be shaken. Why? You have a firm foundation, which is Christ Jesus. We bought a house in Texas, uh, our first house. We didn't know anything about it. I mean, I'm not the handiest guy in the world. I learned some things. I learned more about diesels uh, in five minutes the other day at the swimming pool from Eldon than I ever knew in my whole life about attitudes. And I said, well, why did they put that in there? And he started from the beginning and went all the way through it. Really, he lost me about the first two minutes in. But I acted interested. I opened my eyes real wide. And went, it's a lot. But uh, when we bought our first house in Texas, we it was a nice house, and it was like forty. I, I, we were young, forty thousand dollars. I think that was a lot of money back then. Anyway, it's a big, long house, brick house. You know, we had to ride. My gosh, it had a few cracks under the windows, you know, just from the, in the brick. You ever see that? Mm -hmm. It's where the ground settles the foundation. Well, this one hadn't just settled, it broken. So we had a big crack. And I, every time I'd drive by, I'd think, gosh, that looks bad. So I would try to, you know, chink it up with new uh, mortar and stuff. And ultimately, a little later, it would be cracked again, and I'd go, well, I'm never going to get this thing where it looks normal. You'd have to do. Well, I finally called somebody, and I said, what can I do? And they said, well, you can dig up your foundation <laughs> and pour another one, because that thing is cracked up. And I went, Jim, we just bought a dud of a house, because the foundation is messed up. Well, it was a nice house while it lasted. <laughs> <laughs> Check the foundation. Amen? Amen. In your life, check the foundation. Amen. It's got to be Christ Jesus and Him alone. Absolutely. 
Always check the foundation. We were trying to teach this to your kids this week, and we had so many little kids, and I know that's a handful, and everybody's tired, and those of you who the little kids didn't get sick, well, thank you for your hard work this week. But we need that in our lives, and we need to pass that on to our kids. We need to teach our kids about the things of God. We need to teach them about the Word of God. They need to hear it. You need to be studying it. They need to follow your example, as Paul said to Timothy. You've seen me go through all these things, and God deliver me. They need to see that in your own life, your own personal quiet time, and your devotion to God, your surrender to God. They need to see a firm foundation where you're not shook up and stirred up by everything that's going on around you because, folks, there's a lot of stuff going on around us. And I don't know, uh, somebody asked me, would it get better or worse? I think it'll get worse before it gets better. We know it's going to get better, amen, because we got heaven waiting for us. Hallelujah. Amen. But it may get worse here. And I'm almost sure of that because the Bible tells me that. I wanted to uh, tell you a little story. And this I've never even mentioned this before to most of you. Even to Jim, I think. Maybe I did. But after our son Tim was uh, injured in Iraq, uh, and I'd had cancer and stuff, well, I was getting to feeling better. And Jim, uh, Jake had joined the military. He had joined the Marines. And uh, he didn't talk about it much, but he, he went to war in Iraq and Afghanistan. And one of those times, I think it was a couple years after Tim had got out of the hospital, or maybe a year after Tim had got out of the hospital, I was mowing the yard, and I mow the yard like most people do. I don't wear m many clothes, or I didn't at the time. Am I the only guy? <laughs> I mean, I had on some blue jean shorts and no, and some water socks. That was it. <laughs> I mean, I was uh, nobody's gonna see me. I live so far out in the country, nobody could. And I had a line of pine trees, you know, so nobody could see me. But I was out there tanning, riding on the lawnmower. I've been cutting the limbs and stuff, so I was dirty from top to bottom. And uh, I was mowing along on that craftsman lawnmower, and I see this official government car pulling my driveway. Yeah. Oh, uh, now mind you, I've already received a call about one son. Jake's in Iraq, and here comes this official government car. And as a this guy, I'm, I'm praying when I see his car coming down the gravel road. I'm praying, go on by, go on by, please, just go on by. He doesn't. He turns in my driveway. Well, in that minute span or whatever 30 second span of time you can't imagine all the things that ran through my mind and as a matter of fact by the time he was getting out of the car I was jumping off that lawnmower and running up to him and I was going to grab him and tell him get out of here and so I start running at him with my short blue jean shorts <laughs> water socks as dirty as could be I'm running at him and I'm buff back then. You know what I, mean? <laughs> <laughs> I just had to add that part. Hey, there's no truth to that at all. <laughs> you were getting too intense. I got a lot of it. But I was. I was just start. I start running towards the car, and I think all these things are going through my mind. And I want to tell you this: uh, in every decision, you as Christian. That if it was not for the Lord, you would go to the very worst. Amen. Yeah. If you didn't have a strong foundation, you would just be cracking. By the time I got to this man, he was fearful, I could tell. <laughs> he had a, he had a Air Force uniform on, so I thought that was kind of strange. And, you know, a Marine running at an Air Force guy is not scared at all. So I think I could take this guy if I had to. I don't know why I would have hurt him, but he pulled in my driveway. I think he's going to tell me my kid's dead. So 
I get up to him and I said, what, what do you want? What do you want? He said, hey, hey, hey. He said, I'm looking for, what was our address? 8569, 8589, 242nd Road. He said, I'm looking for 80, uh, 8511. 242nd Road, I said, huh. <laughs> you get out. I said, don't ever pull in my driveway again. No, I didn't say that. I said, oh, thank God. That was my first thought. But between the time I got off and I started running toward this car, God had already says, well, whatever it is, John, it'll be all right. Whatever it comes your way, I'll be there with you. All those things that the Holy Spirit and the Lord says to you when you've had a firm foundation placed on you, Christ Jesus the Lord, when you know that God is going to work all things together for good, when you know that if uh, by faith, he, uh, uh, by speaking it, He created the world, that He can do anything, that nothing is impossible with God, you know in your heart that God is able and abundantly uh, uh, able to do exceedingly more than we could ever think, dare ask, or even imagine. When you have all that foundation laid under you, I want to tell you something. You can stand up to anything. <coughs> Bad news, no matter what. Bad situation, no matter what. God will work it out. But you got to trust Him and you got to have that firm foundation. And you got to build that for your kids. You got to be one of those. They're going to have to be watching you and seeing how you handle these things because they're going to be like Paul one of these days, and you're going to be saying, "Well, don't you remember when we went through this? And don't you remember when we went through that?" They're going to look at you and they're going to say, "My parents did it. I saw God do it through them. I know He can do it through me because I've surrendered my life to Him." I'm telling you, a firm foundation is vitally important. And the only one that will stand is Christ Jesus, the Lord. Amen. I remember when I didn't have that, before I got saved. Let me tell you how I reacted to everything back then. I was angry. You ever meet anybody who's just angry all the time? That was me. I mean, I could be smiling, but I'd be angry on the inside. You got to have that firm foundation so that you can't be shaken when everything's being shaken. It's kind of like sifting. You're getting all the good stuff. Remember when uh, they told uh, Jesus told Peter he was being sifted? All the bad stuff falls out, and all the good stuff stands, uh, stays in there. But the truth is, that's how our life is. Let me ask you something. Do you have a firm foundation? No. I was reading uh, through Hebrews this, uh, this week. Here's one of the things that I noticed. In Hebrews chapter 4, it talks about Jesus being our forerunner and also about uh, the anchor of hope. You know what that anchor offers us in Jesus being our forerunner? You know what that's really illustrated? It was about little ships that come off big ships and they carry the anchor into the harbor so that the, when the wind gets up and sees, it won't capsize the big ship. Those forerunners go in, take the anchor, set it, and then the big ship can be reeled in and pass through the storm. Jesus has done that for us. Amen. You ever had any storms in your life? Mary told him, aren't you? I am the storm. She's the storm. She got it on me. Really, she's kind of the secondary foundation. She's part of that foundation that Christ Jesus laid for me. Any of you ever have those times when you feel like you're being shaken? Need a firm foundation. I need a firm foundation, and you can only have that through Christ Jesus. Amen. Young families, and praise God for you, young families. We praise God for you. For you. I'm going to tell you, you're not going to make it if you don't have a firm foundation.
which is Christ Jesus the Lord. How many of you people with gray hair or should have gray hair? <laughs> say amen to that. Amen. You're not fooling us. Say amen. <laughs> <laughs> we know they're all 101 or whatever it is. So. We know what will get you through in life, in this life. Christ Jesus and Him alone, right? Amen. In the tough times, when it's shaking you, you better get hold. You see all that stuff giggle when I did that? <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. I'm going, man, it's a whole lot of giggling going on. <laughs> Don't get that on the camera. <laughs> Praise God. Our little kids, that's what your, your uh, vacation Bible school teachers were teaching your children. Have a firm foundation. God's love, His forgiveness, worth. His, their worth because of the price He paid, the promise, the promises that God has made to them, and their foundation for life is all mixed up in Christ Jesus. And Amen. Amen. Well, we have kind of an abbreviated thing. We're going to take up a little offering here at the end. Uh, you got something you're going to play, Captain? <laughs> yeah. Anybody else want to play? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ralph's coming. While he's doing that, anybody got a testimony real quick? 